Hey everybody, welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Today, it's your video. This is the video that I have gotten requested more than any other over the course of the past year. Today, I'm here to make all your wildest dreams come true. We are going to recap, going over and showing every single project that we have left in the inventory and giving a status update on it, what the plan is for it. And we're probably also going to cover a few hidden gems that I don't think you guys have gotten to see yet whether the videos just haven't come out yet or I haven't got to work on them yet or whatever. There's a couple couple things sitting around here that have been in the background of videos for actually going on years now for a couple of them that uh, you guys have just never got really introduced to. So we'll hit all of those and more today and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. As I said, I've been getting a lot of requests for this one. Today is actually December 27th, so I'm trying to get this video out as my little New Year's slash Christmas gift to you guys. A little extra content for your... Uh, Diesel Creek digestion. So we will just start right here in front of the building, I guess. This guy right here is one of those light plants that I just picked up at the most recent Ritchie Brothers sale. Uh, this one runs and operates just fine, paid 800 bucks for it, and here it sits. I'm gonna actually go through all of my light plants that I own, figure out the nicest two that I wanna keep for myself, and then sell off the other two eventually. So not a super high priority, but right now this one's sitting here, so in case I need to run my well at all, I just have a plug end on the well and I can plug it into this. I have power into the building now, but I don't have any power over here yet. So this thing can run the well. If I need to use the well, I don't really use it for very long right now. I don't have any running water in the building or anything like that. So probably just be filling up a bucket or washing something off real quick. So anyways, that's why that light plant's there is basically just a little generator so I can run that well. Moving closer to the building here, we see our 25 kV transformer. It has been raining pretty much for two days straight here. It is absolutely completely saturated. The ground is soaked. And this little hole you see right there is actually the end of my trench that I trenched in here for the power. And I did backfill that, but it's really hard to get all the dirt nestled back in those tight ditches. So it kind of collapsed and now the water is following the ditch line around the transformer and actually flowing out right here. That's the first I've seen it doing that, and it's just doing it because we have absolutely so much rain that the ground is so saturated. The transformer is already leaning, which I kind of anticipated. When I backfilled that, I had a pretty good hole dug there so that I could put in all my conduits. And I packed it in with the bucket of the machine, but I knew it was going to settle, so not really a big deal. I can get back in there in the spring, just kind of dig around the base of the transformer, lift it up level, throw some gravel under it, and it'll be fine. The whole area in here I had kind of torn up, so I knew after a few good rains, it was going to really settle out. So uh, some of these things, some projects like that with dirt work, like you're, there's just no way to get it perfect. And you could say I could have compacted that with like a jumping jack or something, but I didn't put nice bedding around those conduits or anything. So I was a little hesitant to run something like that on the lines and potentially break my conduits. That ditch line all the way from the transformer all the way over to the building has settled just slightly, which again, I did anticipate on not a big deal. That's a 10 minute fix with the skid steer in the springtime when it's dry again. So here is one that you guys have not seen yet. I don't think it's maybe showed up in the background of one or two videos now at this point. This is a thousand dollar man lift. Now we already had another thousand dollar man lift over there, but this thousand dollar man lift is in much better condition. Uh, a fan of the channel reached out and said that his company was going to get rid of this thing for scrap and said, do you want it? A thousand bucks. And I said, okay, sure. I was under the impression that this unit did not run. I think I saw a couple pictures of it that he emailed to me previous to agreeing to the purchase. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised when I got there to pick it up and the people at this company said, oh yeah, no, it runs. We just got a new one. So uh, it's a pretty nice little unit. It's a 45, 25, something like that. I don't remember the model number. I think it's written on the other side. But uh, it's a gas-powered unit, which is slightly a bummer compared to our other unit that we have. It's a Deutz diesel and that other one. Um, but this one here... It just fires right up and functions. So I was going to make a video on this unit, but there's nothing to video. <laughs> Basically, I just got a super good deal on it and pretty happy about it. I've used it for a few little things around here so far, nothing that was worth filming. I put that louver cover on my uh, gable vent up there. 
I cut down a few big tree limbs that were dead and overhanging the driveway, but yeah, there's a few minor details it needs, just some little TLC things. We might make a video on that in the future, but right now, as it sits, it's just good to go. So for a thousand bucks, how can you say no? Four wheel drive, gasoline powered, got like 5,300 hours on it, so it's not even a super high use unit. 5,300 hours is considerably more than the hours on the JLG that we have over there, but the JLG is in exponentially worse condition. It would still be a good unit for somebody. I think it could be salvaged, um, but it definitely needs a lot of love and kind of a low priority project for me. I didn't have the love to give it. So that unit is probably going to be available at some time. So I should probably put a little disclaimer on this video as well before we get too far here. There are things over the course of the video that I might say that I am not really going to pursue fixing up anymore or I might sell or something might be available. Um, if you guys are interested in that stuff, there is an email on the channel. You guys can reach out that way. But please, I'm begging you, I get swamped with emails. Do not email me about it unless you are dead serious about it because I really just don't have the time to dedicate to asking a thousand questions on something and then nobody wants to come out and show it to me. Or it could be like the HD5 down there and you get people that bid on it on eBay and never pay you for it. This guy here is a Caterpillar D4D. It doesn't have a bunch of the tins on it right now, but I do have them all. Um, basically a fan caught me one day at the gas station and said, hey, I got a dozer I want you to come check out. And I went down and we made a deal and here it sets. So it's all there. It functions, it runs, it tracks around. The biggest thing is the undercarriage. More specifically, the track tensioner. The grease tensioner is blown out on this side and the spring is also broken in like four places, I think. And the spring is broken on the other side as well. So it really needs that stuff fixed up on it before you could put it together and run it. But it's a pretty nice little tractor and got a pretty good deal on it. So I'm hoping either over the winter here or by the springtime, you guys will see this thing pulled into the shop, fix those couple things on it, and we'll make a video on it. Moving right down the line here, we have the 2003 F350 Old Blue. This used to be my daily driver truck, if you remember, a couple years ago on the channel. I replaced it with the 21 F450. Still a great truck. I considered doing something with it for a while, and at this point, I just don't think I'm ever going to do anything with it. It's sitting here, and I should probably sell it. So I think it has 130, 140,000 miles on it. It runs good. Uh, I think it's got a slight coolant leak because, you know, six leaker, it's gonna, but minor detail, it could easily be fixed and daily driven yet again. That truck's got a lot of life left in it. I still love that truck. The Doosan air compressor you guys saw at the last Ritchie Brothers sale video. Uh, I haven't done anything with it yet, but basically I bought this to run a sandblaster here in the future when we start blasting and repainting some of this iron. The $200 beater with a heater. She is still here, she still fires up, and I still drive it occasionally. Um, we're coming into winter now, so this is actually the time when this thing is probably going to see a lot of use, because I don't like to drive the, the nice new truck in the salt. And, buddy, we get some salt. That's just a water tanker you guys have seen me use before for running pressure washers whatnot. This here, of course, is the Alice Chalmers HD5 we did a video on a couple weeks ago. I put this unit on eBay. It was bid up to $2,800, which I would call an exorbitant price for this thing. And as I feared, no one paid me for it. So I even sent out some second chance offer emails to the runner up bidders and was gonna give it to them for where they were at before they were outbid or maybe even less if somebody answered me, but nobody even bothered to email me back. So there it sits. Next to the HD5, we have the Alice Chalmers 3500, what was a military gen set is now just an engine. We got that thing running back over the summertime. And that is the heart transplant for Fat Alice. Some of you have been asking when I'm gonna get to that. Well, we'll get to it when we get to it. Priority is kind of low on this project because, well, Fat Alice is still running. If, if it was dead in the water, I would jump on it. But uh, until it's an issue, I'm not really gonna make it a high priority. That engine is not going anywhere. That concrete box needs buried over on the other side of the shop so we can connect some drainage into it. I don't think you guys have seen this unit before. This is a 1950s Fruhoff van trailer. 
So this is about period correct for the 1957 auto car. It is 100% stainless steel, which is really neat. The only thing that's not stainless steel on it is the landing gear, of course the axle, and the hitch plate right here where the fifth wheel connects to it. There's the wheel horse 416 we also fixed over the summer. Uh, it's just sitting here until summertime. It's out of the weather. It's tucked up underneath the trailer here. I'm going to take it and it can be my dad's mower in the summertime. But the Fruhoff trailer is pretty cool looking. It's in pretty decent shape. It was basically just used as part storage. It was basically just used for storing parts for an uh, excavation guy here locally. It actually came from the same place that I picked up that HD6 loader from over the summer. So got a good deal on that. I figured it would be good, cheap, easy storage until such a time that I might think about restoring it and putting it behind the auto car. Priority on this is extremely low. So this is the inside of the Fruhoff trailer here. This thing was full of tons of old equipment parts. The guy that owned this thing used it as storage and he had a coal stripping operation and an excavation business and had a whole bunch of shovels over the years. So lots of neat old stuff tucked in here and I've just been kind of sorting it out, scrapping the scrap and keeping what's salvageable. But uh, lots of neat stuff. I mean, look at, look at the old Texaco barrel. That thing's sweet. Got tons of old wrenches in here. So that's cool. We've currently made it out back of the shop here. We're underneath the back porch and this area has been driving me nuts. I am determined to get this all cleaned up here before the spring. The sooner the better actually. What I'd like to do is take all this lumber I have scattered here, there, and everywhere on the porch, over there along the ridge. I have some tucked back in the woods there. It's just good lumber that I've been storing and trying to keep dry and out of the weather. And what I want to do is store it all inside this Fruhoff trailer. So it won't get ruined and we will have it organized. If we need some lumber, we got it. There's some other odds and ends like those toolboxes that need put away and they can probably go in the Fruhoff as well. Back here is my used motor oil tote and then I have an antifreeze tote over there that I keep all that kind of stuff stored up in really well. There is black beauty all over the ground from sandblasting the workbench you guys saw in a previous video. So I got the sandblasting rig right there connected to the SRAM Numa Power. So this red thing right here is the SRAM Numa Power compressor that you guys may or may not have seen the video on a couple years ago. It's a pretty cool unit. It's like a 1950s. I can't remember the year offhand, but it's a 1950s Wisconsin four cylinder engine that's converted from the factory to run on the left bank. And then on the right bank, you have compressor heads on there and it compresses air on those two cylinders and it makes 35 CFM at 190 PSI or something like that. It's for, for the size of the unit, it's actually a pretty impressive compressor and it runs that small sandblaster just dandy so no complaints there um, the reason i bought that bigger Doosan diesel compressor is because that sandblaster is not big enough to really effectively sandblast things like d8s which is where i'd like to be of course the wood miser sawmill it has not seen much use since the springtime when i cut the maple to redo the deck over trailer but over the winter here i would probably like to Cut some more lumber up on that thing. My dad's talking about retiring, so probably something good for him to do is come out here and cut some wood for me. I'll try and Tom Sawyer him into that. Moving away from the back porch now, this little gem right here you guys may or may not have seen. I did show it in a couple of videos, so I can briefly discuss it here, but there will be an entire video coming on this thing. Uh, you may also have seen it on Clint from CNC Equipment. He showed it on his channel, but this is my new MIDI excavator. This is a Case CX80 that I bought from him and it's a real nice machine and this is an upgrade from my 2000 Komatsu PC75. There'll be an entire video coming soon on this unit here so just stay tuned for that. This guy here is just a little Ingersoll Rand roller that I borrowed from my buddy Sam from Scrappy Industries. I tucked it away under the roof here and he said it could stay here for the winter so free storage for him, free roller usage for me. 
Of course, we have the Bobcat S185. This was my very first machine. If you haven't seen it much in the last couple of years, it's because I haven't used it a whole lot in the last couple of years, but I do still use it uh, regularly enough that I would never want to get rid of it. It is a handy machine when you need a nice small machine to get into tight places, or uh, actually I use it mostly now for just loading and unloading things here and running around the farm because rubber tires are a lot cheaper to maintain than uh, rubber tracks like we have on the Takeuchi. Next in line here, we have the Humvee. So up here we have the 1991 Humvee that we bought from the Ritchie Brothers auction, I think two years ago now. Uh, nothing wrong with it. I just haven't driven it much this summer. It's, uh, it's a fun little unit, but just not a practical daily driver or anything. So I get it out here and there, take it to some car shows. It gets a good bit of attention, but I really just don't drive it much. So. I'm thinking about selling this unit as well, just for the fact that it sits here and doesn't get used and well, that's not good for anything. So there it sits. If we get some good snowfalls this winter, I'd like to pull it out and use it, but it's the end of December and it's 43 degrees out here. So it's not looking good for snow. Over here, we have the Ventrac 4500. You guys have seen this thing make plenty of cameos and tons of videos, not to mention some dedicated videos. I love this thing. I absolutely adore this thing. It, <laughs> I can't say enough good about it. They brought this thing to me as a demo a while back and they were gonna take it back. And after I used it for like a week, I called them and I said, absolutely not. You're never getting this thing back. What's it gonna cost me? So uh, we worked out a deal and I bought it off of them. So I use it all summer as a mower for around the farm here. It does a great job of mowing in the woods and around trees and over hills and everywhere. This thing gets around fantastic. Last year I had a turbine blower on loan from Ventrac and I tried it out and I loved it. And when the leaves started falling this year, I was in a panic because I didn't have that turbine blower. So luckily I was able to find one and purchase that this year as well. So that thing is a lifesaver for having this big long driveway surrounded by trees. There's no way to keep up with it unless you have something like that. Uh, a, a regular leaf blower just ain't gonna cut it. Behind the Ventrac, we have the International Dump Truck 4900 DT466 engine with an Eaton 10 speed. You guys have seen this thing in tons of videos, really not much to say about it. It's a trusty workhorse. I just haven't used it a whole lot this year. I guess while I'm standing here next to it, it would be a good time to discuss the Mr. Cool mini splits that I installed a while back on the shop here. So far, we're on three months of usage now, maybe closing in on four actually, and fantastic. Uh, no complaints whatsoever about these guys. I need to connect the drain pipe on this outdoor unit. I did it on the one down there, but I bolted this one down and never put the nipple on the bottom of the unit to catch the condensation. And currently that is sweating and running up against the building. So that's something I need to get done here. Possibly today actually would be a good time to do that. But that's really the only thing. And they've been keeping the shop nice and warm. No complaints there at all. Moving away from the shop right now, we have the International 270 Series A Payho. Uh, you guys saw the video on this guy back over the summertime. Um, well, it hasn't made me fall in love with it, but I do enjoy this thing. It, it comes in handy. This thing needs some TLC and definitely a good pressure washing. As you can see, it's covered in moss and everything else, but I have used it a little bit here. Not a ton. I, the future is uncertain for this unit. I still have not decided whether I'm going to sink the money into replacing every single hydraulic hose on this beast or just fix it up a little bit and send it down the road. So all I can really say at the moment is that the future is uncertain. One of my other light plants sitting right here, this is the one that ran the shop pretty much all summer until we got the heat installed. Then this guy wasn't enough to cut the mustard. So swapped it out for the big welder that I had sitting there running it in the last video on the power installation. Other than being due for a service and needing the hood hammered back out and re-riveted back in place, really nothing wrong with this unit. Ready to go. Last thing in this area, but certainly not the least, is my pride and joy, old fat Alice here. When I got this unit, I never dreamed that I would use it nearly as much as I do, but this thing comes in handy all the time. Constantly using this thing for moving big stuff around here, loading and unloading, dragging in dead vehicles and projects. It's a beast. 
Not a whole lot wrong with this machine. I do have that other engine over there, as I believe I mentioned earlier. We're going to swap that out at some point, and when such a time arrives, I may rebuild the torque converter in it. It feels a little weak when you get onto hills. It's, it's fine on flat ground, but it just does not like slopes. So that's all I've got to say about that for now. In front of Fat Alice here, we have runway track. And if you don't know what that is, basically this is the beams that the crane will ride on when I put the bridge crane into the shop. Yes, I know. I've been getting a million and one questions about the bridge crane install and it is still going to happen. I think most of you just underestimate what a massive project that is. So I have not been in a hurry to dive into something that's going to require 100% of my attention for a while. It is, however, something I'm hoping to get started on during the winter. I don't know if we'll have it finished by summer, but it would be ideal. But anyway, that's the runway track. That is what will go along the top of the wall inside the shop and support the crane. I don't think you guys have ever seen this guy before. I would imagine this is a 1950s Huber machinery, a small asphalt roller. It doesn't vibrate or anything. It's just a static roller. There's the tag on it. Um, somebody gave me this thing in 2018, I think. And at one point I had it running and driving and I was able to cruise around my yard with it. But it's kind of a neat little thing, but ultimately not good for much these days. It might be good if you had like a little driveway you're just trying to keep the gravel packed on. It has like a 16 horsepower Tecumseh engine in it. And it does run, or did at least. Probably needs a little love at this point, but... I have no use for it. If one of you are interested in it, drop me a line. This guy here is a throwback on the channel for some of you guys that might remember early on. This was my first project on the channel, I think. This is a 1950s Essex vibratory tow behind roller. I think it's like a 53 inch drum or some weird size. But this thing had a four cylinder Wisconsin engine on it when I got it and the engine blew up on me. Basically, I went junkyard shopping and found a four-cylinder Kubota engine out of a Motorrec industrial cart. And we were able to get that Kubota engine slapped on there. And it, it shakes the ground. I mean, this thing is a good little roller, actually. I need to change the motor mount design. I kept the tall rubber cushions on the engine mounts from the cart that the engine came from. And that does not work in this application. So... You see how much the motor shakes around? That's not good because you can't keep constant belt tension. So it shredded the belts on me, but it was working good up until that point. So I basically just want to take those motor mounts off of there one of these days and exchange them for hockey pucks. And that should keep the motor stiff enough to put some new belts on it and they should last this time. The Ramax Trench Compactor. We did some videos on this guy quite a while ago on the channel, I think two years ago now. I got this thing for free off of a job site where they were going to throw it away. It had a blown engine at the time. I scrounged around, put together a new engine for it out of three that I had had to acquire. It's a ferryman single cylinder diesel, not exactly easy to find parts for. It was working great for a while, and then over the summertime here when we did the trench from my meter socket over to the transformer for the power, I was using it to compact the driveway section of the trench and I don't know what happened. I haven't investigated yet. All of a sudden the engine changed sounds real quick and started putting out a ton of smoke. So I hurried up and shut it down. I don't know what's going on in there, but can't be good. I do have luckily another engine that could go onto this unit. So one of these days we'll pull that thing back in the shop and investigate and figure all that out, but pretty low priority. It's not something I use a whole lot, but handy to have when you need it. The JLG40HA. This was the first thousand dollar man lift that I acquired. This one has the three cylinder, three cylinder Deutz diesel in it. And I had this thing like 80% functional. I had it driving back and forth. I had the swing working and the steering worked. Uh, it tried to boom up. But that relief right there, something's wrong with that relief and it would just start spraying oil. Otherwise it would have boomed up. The telescope didn't work and a few other functions did not work. Um, but 
while I was using it the one day, I hit the e-stop and something must have shorted out in the panel because everything quit working and now you cannot run it with the panel turned on. You can only run it from the ground. The wiring is a literal rat's nest up in the control box there. It needs a lot of love. Would it probably be ideal just to put a new harness on it? But it is a low hour unit. It only has 1800 hours on it. It's a nice handy size. You can pull it with a pickup truck, but you can still get up and work at a good height with it. It is a 40 foot boom on it. Now that I have that other man lift, I really don't see me ever focusing on this thing again. Um, I like it. It could be a nice little man lift. I do like that it's diesel instead of gas, but uh, it's a lot of work and I just don't have the time to dedicate to it. So if somebody's interested in it, shoot me an offer, but I want more than a grand for it. I'll tell you that. You guys are familiar with these things. We just covered these in a couple videos back. This is my 19, I never did figure out what year they were, 40s or 50s uh, concrete buggies we picked up. So nothing's changed with those since the last video. Uh, I did make out a deal with my buddy that has the concrete company and he wants the parts unit. So I don't know if he's gonna fix it or use it as a display or what, but he is all about it. Glad to see that'll do something instead of just sit here. Behind the concrete buggies, we have the Cummins service van that I picked up at the auction a while back. I've been storing stuff in the rear end there. So nothing has really changed with this thing since the last time you guys saw it, except for, I was trying to get it running actually a couple weeks ago. I was gonna try to use the air compressor that's a PTO air compressor on this unit because it's quite a few CFM, I don't remember off the top of my head. It started right up like normal and then it died. So it seemed to me that it was just starving for fuel. I'd imagine there's probably some moisture in the tank and we had a frozen fuel line or frozen fuel filter or something like that. So it's got a 24 valve Cummins in it and an Allison automatic behind it. Basically, I bought this thing for the price of the engine and I was gonna strip it out of there and put it into a project eventually. I don't have anything specific in mind at the moment, but it's there if I need it. I would sell off the chassis and the body and everything if somebody was interested in that. This whole big pile of logs right here is all for the sawmill whenever we get to that with all my free time. The Bomag BW213PD. This is the only machine that I think I've ever lost money on. I guess I shouldn't really say that conclusively yet. I haven't sold it, but I paid twenty dollars or $21,000 for this thing at the auction. I bought it with my building pad in mind over here. I needed something, a big heavy hitter, to really pack that fill in. And this is what I came up with. At the time, it was kind of post-COVID, there was not really any equipment available and the stuff that was available was going high, very, very high. So that's why I had to spend so much on this thing. I could have rented one, probably would have been the smarter choice at this point, but I have a few other big projects that I'd like to do in the future around here that I thought this would also be good to have around for. So I decided to pony up and buy one and it kind of bit me. So the machine ran and operated and it packed dirt, albeit not the best. It, it definitely doesn't hit as hard as it was intended to. At the end of the last video on this unit, something catastrophically failed in the drum and it's been sitting here for two years now. I would really like to get this thing fixed sooner than later, but I've got just so many projects. This one is fairly high on the list of priorities though. As you can see, Something is sheared off and missing in here. There's supposed to be some sort of a coupling from here into the drum. There's basically nothing holding the drum into the frame on this side of the machine. So I either need to lift the drum out of the machine or lift the machine off the drum, one or the other, and get in there and figure out what exactly is busted and get some parts made for it. After that, it would be ready to go again. Kind of a major ordeal to get into though. Not much to see here. We've got the mower deck for the vent track down there, concrete mixer, and a couple winches that came off of a uh, side boom that Clint brought up for me. I kind of worked those into the deal on that excavator. Back here we have our Bantam C350 that we rescued from the backside of that lake. Um, haven't done anything with it this summer. I do like this little unit. I want to get on this thing. Uh, hopefully next summer I'm trying to get this thing not restored but at least functioning. I think it would be fun to play with her out here. Uh, have a drag line at home, get some seat time, get some experience, because the one and only time I've really tried to run a drag line, I was not very good at it, and I own two or three of them, so I should probably learn how to run one. If you haven't seen the videos on this guy, definitely worth a watch. 
I'm hoping this trip down memory lane uh, makes some of you guys go back and watch the videos on these projects because they were some really good videos. This one being one of my favorites. This little Bantam is powered by a Detroit 353 and this thing sounds awesome. Basically this thing sat on the backside of a 30 acre lake for nearly 40 years before the guy that gave it to me found it. He bought the property, didn't know it was there. And then uh, when he stumbled upon it, he said, I need to get this thing out of here. Found my channel, said, hey, if you want this thing, come get it. And uh, that we did. Me and my buddy Mike went out on that adventure and it was, it was one for the books. This thing fired up after sitting for nearly 40 years. I was able to get it running and we ended up walking it almost a mile or right at a mile around this lake through the woods up to where we could get it loaded onto a low boy and hauled here. So it's worth saving. It's a really nice small machine. There is a market, I would say, for a machine this size around here in our area to muck out little ponds. So I think that would be fun to do some jobs like that in the future. Um, like I said, she needs some TLC, but mostly just cosmetic. I've never showed you guys this thing before. This is an old light plant from the 60s or 70s. Now you can't see it very well, but hiding in there is a two-cylinder air-cooled Lister diesel. I got this on a property cleanup job from a lady who said her husband bought it in preparation for Y2K, and that was the last time it was running. So one of these days, we'll see if that Lister's any good, get it fired up, and probably just sell it because I don't have a use for it, but if it runs, it's worth something. I know there's a lot of diehard Lister fans out there. This project, some of you may remember, was kind of a flop. This was a Gale high throw silage blower. I picked this thing up, oh, probably through two or th two years ago now. I bought this to try to turn into a leaf blower, um, basically to do what the Ventrac does now. And I worked my butt off on it for like a solid two, three days out here in the cold. It was before I had a shop or anything, of course. So it was snowing. I was welding and cutting and grinding and we hooked it all up and I was so excited to try this thing out. And it just does not make hardly any airflow at all. And it could definitely be quickly revised. I still would like to get to it someday, but that's basically a pipe dream at this point. It's so low priority. Basically the inlets right there and the outlets like a foot away. So it just doesn't have time to build up any airflow. I need to patch that and move the inlet up there somewhere. And that should help put a lot more uh, compression into the air. I think is like you're compressing the air with the impeller wheel in there and should create quite a bit more airflow. So I don't know, that could be one of those things I get a wild hair for one day and go ahead and cut a hole and weld a patch and should be Bob's your auntie. That pile of wood right there, I need to uh, sick the wood processor on one of these days that I have for the skid steer. And this pile right here is also nice saw logs for the sawmill. So again, with all my free time, I've got lumber to cut. Take your hats off for this one, guys. My trusty Komatsu PC-75 is going down the road. This thing has been in countless videos. It is the icon for the channel page. This was my first excavator ever, my second machine ever, and I'm gonna miss it. It's a great machine. Uh, the fellow that's buying it has got a good deal on it, I think. It's got a lot of life left in it. Uh, just needs a little bit of love. She's treated me good, so it is sold. The case replaces this one, and I'm gonna miss her. Sitting next to the PC-75 excavator is my 1984, I think 1984, Komatsu D41A bulldozer. You guys have seen this thing in tons of videos. Not a whole lot to say about it. There's nothing wrong with it to speak of. Turn the key, let's go to work today. This is one of my best machines right here. I bought this thing at an auction in 2017 for 12.5. It had 90% undercarriage at the time recent overhaul. Um, I haven't put a ton of hours on it, but I have used it a bit and it's been a great machine. The only thing I've really done to it is rebuild all the cylinders, which you guys uh, may or may not have seen the video on. If you're interested, there is a video. It's got a six way angle blade on it. I would say the undercarriage is still 85 to 90% on it. It's a great machine. It's got the big winch on the back here. That thing is unstoppable. Absolute beast. Again, 
one of my favorite machines I own. Uh, is this thing has been trusty as a good old dog. Over here we got our International 454 Utility Tractor. Uh, this guy's made a ton of appearances in older videos. It hasn't showed up much in recent videos, but this is my mowing tractor and a good trailer jockey and uh, that's a utility tractor, so it comes in good for utility purposes. It's, it's tired, it's old, but it does the job. I've got a seven foot woods finish mower on the back here and I use it for the big open areas in the summertime mowing grass. It's primarily what this thing gets used for these days. In front of that we have a snorkel man lift that I picked up at the auction a while back. Uh, I never got around to getting this one working but it's on the list. I still have this one which I'm keeping for myself and I have one in the shop which uh, is promised out to a buddy of mine in exchange for rebuilding the transmission in the 1957 auto car. Can't forget the deuce and a half. You guys have seen the videos on this guy. So this is the first deuce and a half that I bought. This one still has the troop carrier bed on it and everything. This is the truck we took in the parade and had Vinny and his brother in the back end playing music. So this is an awesome truck. Fixed this guy back in the beginning of fall and it's a blast to drive. We're gonna slap an antique plate on this thing in the springtime and we're gonna be uh, probably daily driving this thing a little bit over the summertime get some use out of it. I, I really like this truck. This little guy here covered in junk is something I don't know that I'll ever get back around to but probably should. It would be a handy little unit to have. It's another trench compactor. We did a video on this thing quite a while back. It has a small single cylinder air-cooled hot diesel on it and it's I don't know maybe 24 inches wide. It's a nice size. It's easy to sling in and out of ditches. It is dual drum drive um, the problem with this unit is the drum drives are stuck. The engine runs fine, the transmission is fine, but it's been sitting for so long uh, that the drums are seized in place. So basically you need to break apart the entire unit, take it all the way apart to knock the bearings out of the drums, put some new bearings in it, and theoretically it should be good to go after that. But it's a lot of work for a unit that you could probably buy functioning for a few hundred bucks. So. Hard to justify the time for it, but I would like to get to it one day. It's a pretty cool old unit. As you can see there on the side, it's a master brand compactor, which got bought out by Co-Ring sometime around the time when this thing was built, because I think it has a Co-Ring tag on it somewhere. And then Co-Ring got bought out by Multiquip or Bomag. I think it was Bomag. So you can actually still go out and buy a Bomag compactor that is almost identical to this thing. Like the, the parts breakdowns and everything online for it are all exactly the same. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, this model here, I believe, is probably from the early 70s, I would say. Last thing that we have under the roof of the shipping container here is the old trusty Takeuchi TL240. This is my primary go-getter. Uh, this machine is used almost daily around here for various projects. Uh, got the forks on it right now for moving stuff around, but you guys have seen this thing in action tons of times over the last couple years. No regrets on this machine. It has been an absolute horse and I love this thing. Over here we have the 1957 auto car. It is not lost on me that this truck here is the reason that a lot of you guys are here as well. This truck has a special place for me and that's actually why I haven't done a lot with it, believe it or not. Um, I don't wanna do it wrong. I don't wanna put a lot of time into it and regret it down the road. I want to do this truck right and I want to do it from the ground up. So, so I've just kind of got it in a holding pattern for now until I have the shop completely done and a couple more pressing projects uh, finished up. This truck is low priority because it's never going to be a workhorse. It's never going to be pulling equipment around again. I might pull something small like the grader because it would do that, but it's never going to be moving anything big. It's mainly just going to be a show truck when it's all said and done. So I can't assign a lot of priority to it, although I know many of you would like that. Progress is not at a 100% standstill, though. Over the summer, I did manage to score a new cab for this unit. As you may recall, the original cab to this truck is in terrible condition. The original cab is extremely rusty, dented up. There's putty on it. It's, it's been through hell and back again. But... I was going to save it. I was going to start patching on it when this thing popped up for sale in 
the edge of Pennsylvania, basically into New Jersey, I had to go make a run and snag this thing. With the exception of this door, the cab is all aluminum, which the only difference that makes for us is rather than having three small hinges on the door, uh, these style cabs have a piano hinge. But being aluminum, you know what that means? There's no rot. It is still very solid and very straight. The only dents that I've seen in it, and there may be some small ones, but the only major dent I've seen is in this roof panel right here. And you could dang near pop that thing out with your hand. So it's in great shape. This is gonna save us a ton of work when it does come time to start putting this truck back together. Um, probably gonna start with the cab actually. I'm gonna sand it all down and get it, the body work done on it and get it primed and everything and then store it away until we get the rest of the truck finished and then we'll assemble all the pieces. There's nothing really noteworthy to show in that gray container there, um, but there is something in this red container that you guys have never seen before. I think it's high time we give you a little peek. This little open ditch right here has conduit underneath that water that I still have yet to connect up into the box here and tie in my lighting into the power grid, but that's coming sooner than later. That's an afternoon job one of these days. You may remember the Powermatic bandsaw we picked up at the auction a while back, I think for, I don't know, 120 bucks or something. It was too cheap not to buy it. We couldn't afford to live without it. But what I wanted to show you was this guy. So my buddy Sam over at Scrappy Industries is into machine tools and he bought a few of these Monarch lathes at an auction. This was the biggest of the ones that he bought. And I work on big stuff, so I was able to snag this off of him for a good deal. And just, what, two days ago, three days ago, I sold off my other lathe. So now that I don't have that one to fall back on, we're going to have to get this one connected and fired up and ready to use because when you need a lathe, it is super, super handy to have. So I'm excited about this thing. I need to uh, find the time to get it running. There's not much else to see in this container. Um, it's just storage for a bunch of odds and ends, but as you can see, I do have my compressor from the old shop sitting in here, and that's because we're going to actually connect this compressor in here and then pipe the air underground all the way over to the shop. That way, when I'm filming videos, we never hear that compressor kick on and give us a bunch of noise in the videos. So I think we're probably about 50% through this video at this point. I'm kind of making this notation for myself more than anything, just to see if I have a handle on how much stuff I have to go through here. I'm gonna save the stuff that's in the shop for last, so don't think I'm forgetting about any of that stuff. This is the other deuce and a half that we just did a video on recently. This is the one that has the fifth wheel hitch on it. Have not done anything more with it since that video. I parked it right here at the end and that was it. We still need to fix the brakes on it and then I have a special mission for it. So you guys will have to stay tuned for that. The shipping containers that we bought at the auction back in the fall. This is one of 11 shipping containers that I bought. I sold off a few, so now we have what? There's four, five, six, seven 20 foot shipping containers left. So all the green containers have uh, beams welded underneath of them to be used as skids because these are kind of designed to be drug around and then loaded onto uh, winch trucks. Um, the lighter shade green ones have bigger beams welded on them. So one key piece to the puzzle of the bridge crane project that I was missing was vertical columns to support those runway beams you saw earlier. These lighter shade green containers all have the right size beams that I need. So uh, over the course of the winter here, I'm gonna work on cutting those beams off of the containers and then we will have them for our use in the bridge crane project. So lots to do yet with those. In the meantime, once the beams are cut off, they will be used as storage for now, but there is an ultimate goal to having all these 20 foot boxes and I'm still not ready to share that with you guys. So if you guys have any idea of what I'm looking to do with six out of the seven of these containers, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think I'm fixing to do with them. You guys haven't seen this unit here in a while. This is the Vibro Plus tag along vibrating roller that we fixed up on the channel ooh, like over a year ago now. This is the one that we had completely disassembled. We had the drum out that we had to pull the big eccentric shaft out of the drum and send it off to the machine shop to get a new end welded on it. 
This has that three cylinder FL3, I think, Deutz diesel on it. Uh, runs good, works good. The bearings in the drum were really expensive and we weren't positive that this was even gonna be a viable unit at the time, so did not replace those. They're starting to make a lot of noise. The last time I used this thing, it was growling pretty good in there, but I don't think we can hurt anything. So I'm just gonna keep running it at this point. It doesn't see a lot of use. The next project that it comes out on may be when we fill in the yard back here. That's another project I've discussed in the past. We cleared this area in the springtime and I was hoping over the summer I was gonna get time to bring in material and build this all up to be one big flat grade back here so we could bring all the projects back here and store them. Uh, but that just didn't materialize. Too many things going on with the building and more pressing projects. So in the springtime, or at least over the summer of next year, this has to happen. I need to get this built up, filled in, and all the projects brought back here because I'm probably gonna be trying to build my house by that point, and my wife is not gonna move into that house and stare at all my junk. So it needs to come back here and be out of sight, out of mind. Happy wife, happy life, you know what I mean? I'm standing on my 15K deck over trailer. You guys have seen that thing a million times. Nothing really to say about it. Back here we have the Cub Cadet stockpile. You guys have seen these in the background of several videos and some people often comment on them. Basically, Cub Cadets are what got me into working on mechanical things. I grew up watching my neighbor use one to cut his grass and something about the sound of those Kohler K-Series always got me going even as a kid before I even knew what that was. He used a Model 100, which is that guy right there. Not that specific unit, but the same model. Anyways, that led me down the rabbit hole of collecting these things, and I probably have, I don't know, 25 of these things at least. Most of the better ones are stored at my dad's warehouse. These ones here, um, they were outside when I bought them, so they're sitting outside now. But uh, eventually I'd like to get them all moved into one of these sea cans or a trailer or something. I don't like seeing them sit out here. Down at the very end of that row down there is a John Deere parts machine somebody gave me. It's got a good Kohler K-Series on it is the only reason it's here. And there's a, the Mitsubishi tractor that we revived on the channel as well a while back. The only other thing that's hiding over here is this Arctic Cat 340 snowmobile that I got for five gallons of diesel fuel a couple years ago. I did a video at the time on the channel of getting this thing running. Um, the problem is the one ski is broken off the front, it needs a spindle, and it needs all the plastic gearing that drives the, uh, the track. So I looked at doing that. It's prohibitively expensive. You can buy a running, working snowmobile for uh, what just the plastic gears cost. So not really worth fixing, but I've been kicking around different ideas of ways to use that 340 engine. This pile of rusty bits right here is what's left of a 40s Farmall A. Um, my buddy Austin bought this thing a while back. There is a video of it. We brought it in whole to his place and he was gonna fix it up and work on it, but ended up the engine was completely scrap on it. Everything was full of water. It's all junk. It's got a lot of nice straight pieces on it. There's some wheel weights there. There's a rear hitch. There's a nice fuel tank, a bunch of odds and ends, good radiator, good hood. Front grill is mediocre, um, but we need all those pieces for my 41 Farmall A that some of you guys have asked about. It shows up in the background of some videos and we'll see it here shortly. Basically, I gave him a case of beer for this unit just for the parts and it's never gonna get put back together or anything. It's just a parts machine. I believe these wheels, I don't even know where these came from at this point, but I think these fit a Ford Model A and I have no use for them. So if somebody wants these things or if they're worth money to somebody, send me an email. That's an Amita light plan I picked up a while back. There's a video on that. I think I paid 900 bucks for it, nothing wrong with it. This is a Buffalo Springfield smooth drum roller. I got this for a song and a dance and there'll be a video on it one of these days. I'm certain you guys all remember this beauty right here. This is the $3,500 Grove crane that we picked up at the auction back in the fall. No more updates to it really. It hasn't done much since you guys last saw it, but I do have some big plans for it here this summer. So stay tuned for that. So surely you guys remember these blue Connex boxes I bought at the auction last winter.
These are the boxes that are all rigged up with lighting. So basically I've just started filling up these Connex boxes with things that don't need to be crowding the shop. I've got all kind of stuff tucked away in here and it's really nice to be able to come in here and see what you got because there's enough shelving in here you can kind of spread everything out. It doesn't have to be piled on top of each other. The reason this box is sitting on a trailer is because this is not its permanent location. I moved it over by the shop to put most of this stuff in there so I wasn't lugging it. Eventually all three of these buildings will be brought into the laydown yard area connected together and that's what these pass-through doors are for here. Um, you'll have a box on either side of this so you'll be able to just walk right through the door into the other box and down the aisles and see what you need. It's really nice though I just have these uh, power boxes back feeding into the self-contained electrical grid here so I can run the lights even though we're nowhere near power. Come in here and find what I need, and kill the lights and leave. Just some other random stuff hanging out back here. We've got buckets for machines. We've got some attachments for that Mitsubishi tractor, skid steer tracks, and a fuel pump, which will come into play here in a little bit. I picked up these couple buckets from a junkyard a while back. This one here is pretty rough, but it has a quick attach on it. And this one does too. And it's pretty close to the size I need for Fat Alice. So that would be really convenient if I could adapt that quick attach to work on Fat Alice, which is why I bought it. Got our metal stockpile back here. That's a 471 Detroit sitting there. It's locked up, but I think it's just the blower that's actually stuck on it. So one of these days I might try to dig it out and put it in something if I find something that needs a Detroit. Got another skid of Cub Cadet parts, which I would like to get out of the weather here. All right, we're gonna start moving down the driveway now, getting to some of these other projects that aren't right around the shop. And we're gonna do that in style on our 1988 Yamaha G2 golf cart. So this golf cart was a very early uh, appearance on the channel. I got this thing for a hundred dollars out of a junkyard and I haven't done a lot to it and I use it all the time so I love this thing. I think we're gonna go to the far end and work our way back. All right, so down at this end of the driveway are a few of those nuggets that I know that you guys haven't really seen before. They may have showed up in the background of some videos, but I've never addressed them. So first thing here is the Cabelco SK250. We got this thing coming up on two years ago now, and not a whole lot wrong with it. We replaced the manifold when I got it, and now it has an exhaust leak, so I need to put a muffler on it, but that's pretty much all that's wrong with it. A few minor little things, but nothing major. Hiding behind that thing is an old truck chassis. I made a deal with a local tire company and bought some of their trucks. That knuckle boom crane was part of that deal. It's sitting on an old truck chassis, but that's pretty much just scrap. That IMT knuckle boom though is uh, probably worth saving to somebody. There's a 16K deck over trailer right there that, uh, well, I think I sold to my buddy two years ago now when I got that International Lodestar and he's just never come and gotten it and that's fine because I have things stored on top of it so it can sit there and rot away it's paid for. The little Volkswagen rabbit pickup truck this has a 1.6 liter diesel in it if memory serves it's been a while since I looked at this thing. Um, the body's really rough on it I don't have a title the clutch is gone but the engine runs and that was pretty much why I wanted it so if the engine ever blows up in the CJ5 my plan is to yank this engine out and put it in the CJ5. Next to the Rabbit, we have our Unit 1020 drag line. This was the first friction machine that I bought, and unfortunately, it was the first machine to get neglected. Uh, it's just, it needs a lot of love, and I'm not saying I'll never get to it, but it is lower on the priority list. Even when I fix it up, I don't know that I would ever fully restore it. Uh, basically, I want it for a yard machine, because it's a three-quarter yard machine. It can probably pick close to 20,000 pounds, I think set up as a crane. It does run, it does function. It was a digging machine when I bought it. The problem is the boom. Uh, when we tried to disassemble the boom, we would lowered it down and the cable broke and it fell to the ground, landed on the bucket, damaged a boom section. So I need to fix that section of the boom before I could really use it again. Next to that, we have an International 4900 truck. I picked this thing up for parts. It has a good running, low mileage, DT-466 mechanical engine in it, which is the same engine that's in my red dump truck. It also has the same transmission, and that was pretty much my reason for purchasing it. The transmission that's in the red dump truck works for now, but it does have a couple bad gears in it, so whenever it decides to let go, 
I've got this one sitting here as a backup. I covered this before. This is an International 454 gas job. I bought it for the loader, but the loader's pretty clapped out on it. At this point, I've got so many other machines that I'll never put that loader on that tractor. It would kind of just make the tractor less handy. It's just going to make it bigger and more cumbersome. The tractor does have some wheel weights on it. I would like to save those, uh, but it's got good rubber on the back. Gas engine's locked up. Loader, you know, it'll function, but it's just sloppy. It would be good for somebody, but it's just not ever really going to be anything I'd ever use at this point. So if anybody's interested in that thing, I guess it's for sale. It I was just standing on top of my 35 ton low boy that I don't think you guys have ever seen. It has showed up in the background before, but unless you were an astute observer, you probably didn't notice it. So it is a ground bearing detached neck 35 ton low boy. What that means by ground bearing is there's a hydraulic ram that comes down off the neck and picks up the trailer. And that's how you detach the neck. That system is less desirable than what they call non-ground bearing, which has the ram set up in the neck and kind of cantilevers the weight and lifts itself that way. When you have a neck set up that way, they are cheaper to buy, but again, less desirable. I got this thing at an auction. Uh, I don't remember what I paid for it offhand, but it's actually in really nice shape. Uh, it doesn't need much to be roadworthy at all. I think it just needs the taillights rewired or something. There's a loose connection somewhere, but it's in real good shape. So I bought this to pull behind the orange auto car when we get it finished. And when I say when we get it finished, you're just going to have to stay tuned because that's coming at the end of the video. The Heat King ground heater, we just covered that in the last Ritchie Brothers auction. Basically, I bought that for a reasonable price, but I thought I was getting a better deal on it because I thought there was a Kubota diesel in it, but turns out I was wrong. Trying to talk my concrete guy into buying that thing because that could be something he could use. Over here we have the Ford crane truck that I bought at the auction a couple years ago. This has a gas engine in it that was locked up when I bought it. Uh, this is what we did the shade tree rebuild on. I yanked the engine out, I rebuilt it underneath the tree here. And uh, it runs, it functions, it does what a crane does, but I just don't use it a whole lot. Thinking about selling it now that I have that big Grove crane, but not sure about this one yet. The tenement on wheels over here. I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually ask me about this, but it's been sitting in the background of a lot of videos. I paid 200 bucks for that camper and it was actually really nice when I got it. And I moved it in here very early on uh, after I acquired the property. There was no driveway, there was no nothing. There was barely a clearing right here where I'm standing. Um, this was all solid woods with no clearing or development or roads or anything. But I pulled the camper in there so that I could come out here on the weekends and stay and work on stuff out here. And I did that a little bit, but then life got busy. I started working out of town. And while I was out of town, a big limb came off of that tree, knocked a hole in the roof, but standing on the ground, you couldn't see that. So when I would come out here, I just looked at it. I didn't see anything visibly wrong with it from the outside, never went in to check. And basically the thing got full of mold and nasty inside and all the ceilings falling down. So that thing needs demoed and hauled out of here, but, uh, might be something we could do over the winter here. Be a good kumbaya on a fire with the neighbors. I got a little five foot woods brush hog there that I sold to a buddy of mine. He just has to come pick it up. That little red truck cap there uh, was off of my old Ford Ranger. I believe my neighbor wants that guy. Some of you guys ask about this little shed from time to time in the background of videos. This is what I call my fuel shed. I've got my fuel tanks for off-road fuel sitting in here under roof and I have my 41 Farm All A. This was my first farm tractor, you could say. I, this is a very small tractor by today's standards, but in 1941, this was a workhorse. These were the early tractors that really replaced the horse and the mule on the small farm. So I really appreciate uh, early agriculture, and I really got into that stuff back in the day. I still like this tractor. It still, it should still run. It hasn't run in many years, but. I'd like to drag it out and restore it one of these days. Restoring one of these is a simple, simple task compared to a lot of these machines that I have to work on now. It could be a fun winter project, and this is what the parts tractor over in the woods is for that we talked about earlier. The grill on this one is in pretty rough shape. The engine really could use a ring job. Kits are available very cheap, so it wouldn't take a whole lot of money and effort to make this thing run and look brand new again. So. It's on the list, but it's under roof. It's not going anywhere. We will get to it one of these days. 
The fuel tanks, we will talk about later, they are not staying there. I want to move them. So this whole area that we're standing in down here right now at the end of my driveway, this was the first area that kind of got cleared on the farm here. This was just a place you could come down in here with your truck and turn around and park, basically, until I got the rest of the driveway opened up and some roads cut in and other places cleared out. This was it. The rest was just dense woods. But my buddy Sam has dubbed this whole area purgatory because it, uh, it's kind of where the parts machines end up. Some of the machines that get parked here, their futures are very uncertain, which leads me to this HD6. You guys saw me drag this thing out of the woods back, uh, I think in July. And this is an Alice Chalmers HD6 that was sitting for 50 years. It looks really rough, but it's actually really solid. Like the undercarriage is very good on it. It's just stuck. The rest of the machine is super straight. It's just ugly. They took really good care of their machines. Uh, this one just sat, unfortunately, and sitting is pretty bad for them as well. If I can get this engine freed up, it could be a good machine still. If we can get the engine freed up, we could probably get the undercarriage moving. If we can get the undercarriage moving, then we could have a decent little track loader here. The backhoe was adapted from some other machine. It's not really supposed to be on there, so that's probably going to get the gas axe. Not really much use for something like that these days. This dump trailer here behind the HD6 came from the same place that the HD6 did. It's a 22 foot pen dump. I don't know how many ton it's really rated for, but I got it for 500 bucks, so I really couldn't say no to that. Ideally, I could hook that to the auto car and go to the quarry and get large loads of gravel. People have told me that I should get a triaxle in the past and that would be great, but to keep a triaxle on the road, you need to be running it because it's just too expensive to keep registered and insurance on. Um, so. I can keep the auto car on the road and just use the dump trailer to get loads of gravel if I need large amounts. This is another Alice Chalmers HD5, like that yellow one up by the building that we did a video on a while back. You guys haven't seen this one yet, but it's coming up. Other than that, up here in this area, we have some farm implements. I've got some wheels and tires here for trucks. I've got a drag line bucket for that unit 1020. We've got some culvert pipe stashed back here. This is the blade off of my buddy's D2 that we revived back in the springtime. We just hauled that D2 out of here actually, but couldn't get the blade on the same load, so he'll come for that at some point. So I've been getting some questions about this guy hiding back here. I know very little about it. I know it's a Chevy C60, I could be wrong about that. I did not even buy this truck. My neighbor just dropped it off down here for me one day. He drove it down, so I know it runs. Basically, this is just a Chevy bucket truck. Uh, it has a high ranger, I think 40 foot man lift on it. Uh, he used it for cleaning his gutters and he was afraid to use it anymore. So he just brought it down here for me. He brought this thing down before I purchased that genie man lift that we showed earlier in the video. So I was gonna actually uh, fire this thing up and use it myself for cleaning gutters down here on the building since I still didn't have the JLG man lift working, but since we have the Genie, now I think both of those are gonna be up for grabs. I think that's everything at this end of the property. Let's head back down the driveway and cover the last little bit of stuff close to the building. These are those other two blue containers that we got at the auction last year. I moved them around a little bit over the summer here. They don't have much in them right now. They're going to be relocated here eventually. This container here is a pretty neat one. I'm not gonna go wade through the six inches of water to get to the door, there's nothing in it, but this Connex box is rigged up as a fuel containment. So this was on an Emshaw job site and they kept all their oils and fuel in that and there's like a liner welded into it. So if you have a spill, it's contained in there and that counts as your containment. I'm gonna turn this thing into my fuel island once the lay down yard behind the building is completely done, graded off and graveled. We're gonna put this thing back there. I'm gonna put all my fuel tanks in it and we're gonna run power out there. And that's where that fuel pump I showed earlier is gonna come in. I'm gonna connect it to this and probably get a couple other ones too. And you'll be able to pull up just like the gas station, fuel up your machine or your truck or whatever it is, and then uh, boogie on down the road. That little tractor up there, I don't even know what that thing is. Uh, I'm pretty big into garden tractors, but I can't identify it. I can't get you a very good shot of it right now, but 
There's a good look at it in the video on the Caterpillar 212 road grader. When I brought that home, that was on the same trailer load. So if you wanna take a peek at that thing, if that's where it's at. The bridge crane. Lots of people asking about the old bridge crane here. I think what a lot of people don't understand about this bridge crane is that I did not really buy it because it's a crane. I bought it because it was cheap. <laughs> I bought this thing for a thousand bucks and I bought it because the I-beams that make up this crane are 48 feet long, I think. And they're two foot tall and eight inches wide. And if you wanted to buy one of those beams, it would be significantly more than a thousand dollars. So I've got two here, not to mention all the other gear and bits of steel and the hoist that came with this unit. So I will use some part of this thing in the bridge crane project for the shop, but not the entirety of it. It's gonna get substantially hacked up and that's why it doesn't really matter. I can't even use that hoist, unfortunately. That's an overslung hoist. So basically this crane is not gonna remain whole. We're gonna to have to break it apart and use pieces, parts of it to complete the bridge crane project in our shop. The hoist up there is a seven and a half ton hoist, which is what I would like to have but it won't work for us either because it is an overhead hoist which goes on top of those rails like you see. We are going to want an underslung hoist to maximize headspace because the way that hoist is set up, it forces your bridge beams to be much lower and take up overhead room, which I do not want to limit myself in the shop. So having an underslung hoist, uh, even a low head hoist, which would be ideal, kind of keeps itself tucked up around the beam and you keep the most overhead clearance possible. Not much to see right there. That's just a whole bunch of extra tin that I have from the pole barn building. Over here we have the Caterpillar 212 grader. We worked on this back in the spring and got this thing all running and functioning. I've used it a handful of times over the summer, scratching at the driveway, fixing it up a bit, and it does a pretty good job. I'm thinking in the spring here, we're gonna blast and paint this thing, and that's kinda gonna be my practice for some other projects. So, not a lot to it, it's all one color. Should be fairly easy. The only thing we'll really have to watch for is uh, the glass. Everything else should be able to get blasted and painted. You guys haven't seen this thing before. This is a 14 foot, I believe, aluminum V-hull boat that I was given as part of that property cleanup as well. That came from the same property. We got that little yellow light plant with the Lister diesel in it. It's got a 40 horse Johnson laying in there and it's been sitting out of the water since 1991, I think, which was before I was born. So the lady gave it to me just to get it out of her place and it holds water so it should float. I would like to actually pull this thing in before next summer and try to get it ready for the water. This is the big Lincoln Vantage 400 welder that I fixed up for my brother-in-law a while back. I was using it to power the shop there right before the power company finally came through. It runs and works fine, welds good. He just never came and picked the thing up. This is like a, I don't know, I don't even have a clue what year this thing is. Toyota Corolla, it was given to me and I was beating it around here at the property for a while. Basically, I was just using this thing as a beater car. Somebody gave it to me for free doesn't have a title but it does run and drive good no brakes uh, tires are all flat hasn't been started in a couple of years now so that's that's all I've got to say about that the little red international Lodestar man everybody loves this truck and I do too it is a very cool little old-school truck a uh, lot of fun to drive it's nothing fancy but it gets the job done or at least it did until the bed broke back there so the last time this truck was used was when we were putting in all the fill underneath my building pad i loaded it a bit heavy i guess and the cross members on the dump body were rotted and brad went to run the hoist up and the hoist just kind of pushed right through the bed the bed is actually kind of stuck in that position that you see right there and what we need to do is yank that bed off of there cut out the bad cross members and put some fresh ones in there and then this thing would be pretty much back in action. So the last piece in this little lineup here is our International 3850. This is the unit that I drove all the way up to Michigan to get for free. Uh, I got that back in the spring, I believe it was, maybe it was July. We sent the pump out to Area Diesel Service. They rebuilt it for us and we were able to finally get it running. 
Uh, still doesn't run quite right though. I think it has a blown head gasket at this point, or at least I, I know it has a blown head gasket at this point, but I also think I might have put it back together wrong. There's a chance I put the timing 180 degrees out because it acts exactly like the deuce and a half did when the timing was 180 degrees out on it. So at some point I would like to pull it back in the shop, go over that, make sure it's not out of time, and throw a head gasket at it, and it should be ready to run. Other than that, it, it does function. It's just very old and sloppy. So. I don't think I'd probably wouldn't sell it before I fix it, but uh, I don't think I'm going to hang on to it, actually. We're losing daylight pretty quick here, but this is one of the trucks I got from the tire shop. It's got a 6.4 in it with a blown head gasket, and I mean a very blown head gasket. I got a fellow that supposedly wants to buy it. It's got a good working Joe Mack crane on it there that you guys saw me use to swap out the pony motor on the D8. It also has a lift gate in the back. Sitting in the bed there, is my wood boiler that I need to get hooked up to power the heated floor in the shop. That is going to be a whole project unto itself. That is what I'm going to focus my attention on here over the next couple weeks. I need to get that thing installed as we're coming into January. The weather starts to get pretty cold and I'm concerned the heat pumps aren't going to keep up in the shop. This is my 24k deck over trailer. This is the one that I use a good bit now. I put the fresh deck on it back in the spring and new brakes and it's been doing really well. I just used it the other day to bring home that thing, but you guys can't see that yet. So yeah, good trailer. This is the other truck that I uh, got from the tire shop. And this thing is actually a, a sweetheart of a truck. This thing has a 12 valve Cummins in it, a seven speed Eaton. It boogies down the highway at 75 miles an hour, no problem. Ice cold air conditioning, no body rot to speak of, nice aluminum bed, PTO air compressor, and it's got a knuckle boom crane on it, but the swing gear is out of that crane, and I have not been able to locate a replacement yet. Good little truck, though. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's a nice little guy. The only thing I don't like about this truck is it has electric over hydraulic brakes on it. Uh, I think they call that a Lucas system. Not a fan. Wish it just had air brakes. It would be a great, great truck if it had air brakes. I think this is the very last thing I have to show you guys outside. This is a Caterpillar D47U. Um, I bought this thing coming up on two years ago now. Maybe two and a half years ago, actually. I was all gung-ho for this project. I love these little tractors. These are the first style of D4 tractor. Um, this one needs some undercarriage work. And that was supposed to be it. I bought it as a unit that had sat for a number of years, but was supposedly running when it was parked. And it may have been, but over those years, something happened to it. And the engine is not locked up, but it won't make a full revolution. So when I went to look at it, I was able to spin the engine just enough to say, hey, it's not locked up. And I never tried to make it a full revolution. So I've since learned from that mistake. And when I got it home here, found out that it didn't make a full revolution. So... Don't know what's really wrong with it. I would like to get this thing pulled in the shop. I don't think it'll take a ton to get it running. Those engines are pretty resilient, but good little tractor. Uh, yeah, that's all I can say about it at the moment. Needs some attention like so many other projects you've seen. We're moving inside the shop now, and there's a project that you're not allowed to see in here yet, but if you catch a glimpse of it, just consider it an Easter egg and leave it at that. A couple people have asked me about this unit right here, this white thing. This is a hot water parts washer. It uh, takes special caustic soap and does a really good job cleaning parts. We had a very similar unit at a shop I used to work at. My dad's had this thing for like 20 years sitting in a building. I pulled it out here, stuck it in the shop and tried to use it and something's not right in the pump that pumps the water. So I'm gonna have to tear that apart and figure out what's going on in there, but it tries to work until it makes a big bang and then it trips the breaker. So something's wrong in there. But I'm looking forward to getting that thing operational because, man, it cleans parts like nobody's business. Our little $200 Alice Chalmers forklift. You guys will no doubt remember this thing. It's made tons of appearances at this point on the channel, and I use this thing all the time. Uh, not really much to report there. It, like a lot of things, could use some things fixed on it, but it functions. It starts and drives and lifts things, so that's really all I'm looking for in a forklift. Brakes are overrated. This guy here is the original cab to the 1957 auto car. It is, like I said earlier, super rough. So we are basically just gonna strip usable parts off of it 
and put the rest out back in case we would need something else. But it's pretty much done hogging up floor space in here. It's ready to go. This is the main project in the shop right now. This of course is the 1980 auto car constructor. Currently sitting here with its original 230 horse 855 common small cam engine. Underneath the sheet here is a 400 big cam Cummins that uh, is going to need a little bit of loving on, but eventually we're going to swap that engine into the truck as well as put a 13 speed behind it and uh, some other various work. So those videos and more coming soon. That is my big winter mechanical project. This little light plant here is the one that we covered in the auction video last week. I bought this thing for 800 bucks. It does run as you guys saw in the last auction video. I have not touched it since that video. I'm gonna try to dive into it this week, figure out what's going on there. If it's an easy fix, I'll fix it. If not, kick it outside and worry about it another day. The 1964 CJ5. This is the this is one of my favorite projects that we've done. I love driving this thing. It's an absolute blast. This thing is as OG as it gets. I am the second owner. It was hardly ever driven on the road. We've covered all that in previous videos, but I have a complete suspension replacement kit for it sitting in the back there. I still need to get that thrown on and then get the seats reupholstered. That really shouldn't take all that much time. I'm gonna have that done for the springtime so we can be driving this next summer. This is the other snorkel man lift I mentioned earlier. This one here, I believe, is going to go to a buddy of mine as payment for rebuilding the transmission in the 57 auto car. Back here is, of course, the big workbench that we just built. I think that was the last video at this point on the channel was building this thing. And uh, I haven't used it a ton yet, but the little bit I have used it has been great. That massive fireball hardtail vise on there. I used it the other day for the first time, and that's love right there. That thing is awesome. There were some people asking for toolbox tours. Uh, I'm really not there yet. My tool storage and organization still has a little ways to go before I would uh, be proud enough to show it to you, but we will get there one of these days. As for an upcoming project, uh, that window right there is eventually going to turn into a doorway. I'm going to put an office and a kitchenette and a bathroom out there underneath the lean-to. So we'll be able to move some stuff from the main shop here into that little cubby eventually. I had some people asking about the YZ here in the background of a couple videos. This is an 09 YZ250F. I bought this thing used from the kid that bought it new and he just basically learned how to ride a dirt bike on this thing and dropped it a whole bunch and smoked the clutches in it. So pretty low hours, but kind of scuffed up and banged up for the hours. You can see as the wear on the side of the case there, it has not been ridden a ton. Some of that's from me. I have ridden it a fair amount, not as much as I would like to. Riding dirt bikes used to be a massive part of my life, but, uh, well, just no time anymore. Behind the dirt bike there is, of course, the Honda Pioneer that we picked up at the auction going on two years ago now. Not too proud to say that it's been sitting around here in various places. I tinker on it a little bit here and there, and then I get frustrated because it is full of wires and sensors and angry pixies that I don't quite understand. I wish it was mechanical. I would have had it fixed by now, but there's computers involved, so I get pretty frustrated pretty quick. I'm basically on the verge of taking it to Honda and telling them to just fix it and get it back. Over here is the Cincinnati uh, buffer that we bought at the auction the same time as that Powermatic bandsaw you guys saw earlier. I think I paid 100 bucks for this thing too, or maybe 200, something like that. I know it's technically a buffer because it's got those long spindles on it, but I'm going to put a grinding wheel on the left-hand side here and probably fab up some sort of guards for it so that it doesn't completely destroy my walls behind it. That's why that piece of cardboard is tacked up there behind the wire wheel side because it ejects a bunch of those wires off the wheel and they'll just beat the crap out of my wall. But man, this thing has got some power. If you want to wire wheel something, this is the way. Tucked back in this corner here is the uh, floor scrubber that we revived on the channel a while back. This little guy actually went trending. I think we were up to like number five on the trending page with this thing, which blows my mind, but hey, thanks for watching. I've used it to clean the floor several times since you guys have seen the video on it, but we are overdue to dig it out and give it a scrub again. I mentioned at the end of the workbench video, all this stuff that's piled up right here from that shelf unit all the way out to this red cart 
is all stuff that needs to get put into those blue shipping containers. Over here, I got my little lunch table set up, and this is one of the things that I cannot wait to get out of my main shop space and tucked into that kitchenette slash office area eventually. Once we make some room by getting rid of that, I plan on expanding my uh, bolt and nut selection here. So looking forward to that. Having the bolt and nuts in the shop here has been absolutely instrumental in keeping me moving. Not having to stop what you're doing and drive to town for a couple bolts has been absolutely a game changer. The last thing I want to talk about is the projects that are not currently here or in this video. I know I'm going to get some questions about the 977. A lot of people ask me about that loader. I have not gotten rid of it. It is still on a long-term loan to a friend of mine. Uh, the last couple videos you guys saw on the 977 were at my buddy's place and he is still using it, clearing some of his land. So I think at the end of the next summer, I'm gonna get that machine back and looking forward to it because I actually have a set of tracks purchased for it. So hopefully we can get that undercarriage fixed up a bit and make it a little bit more uh, usable. The only other machines that aren't here are all up at the steam show, that being the D8H, the Bucyrus Erie 22B, and the Lorraine TL25 uh, cable hoe. So all those machines are up at the steam show. They are still functioning and working. Uh, of course, they're old machines. They always need a little bit more TLC, but the D8 I am planning on bringing back and trying to restore over the summertime here. Uh, that's part of the reason I bought that big compressor is so that I can run a big sandblaster. We can sandblast that D8 and uh, give it a nice coat of paint, knock out some of the dents first. And uh, yeah, other than that, that thing runs fantastic. So looking forward to that one. I'm hoping that I have this auto car done in time and with that low boy trailer you guys saw, we should be able to bring the D8 back ourselves and not even have to bug Buddy Sam. I gotta jump in real quick. I'm on my way home from filming this video for you guys, and I just realized that I didn't mention Christine the Greater at all, and you guys didn't see it. That's because it is over at the fairgrounds currently, and I gotta go pick it up this week. Uh, but I had it over at the fairgrounds again for the light display that they do every year. So. Uh, in case you were wondering, that's where Christine is at, and it is no different than the last time you guys saw it. I still need to order all the rubber molding and put the windows back in it, but other than that, she is pretty much done. Well, guys, I think that's pretty much the gist of it here. You guys have seen 90% of the projects, maybe 95% of the projects that are on the agenda or on the back burner or on the forefront of being worked on here. There are a couple of projects which I have withheld from this video uh, just because they're not ready to be shown off, but I'm pretty excited about all of those as well. So as I said earlier, this video was viewer requested. So if you guys like the video, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button down below. It really helps out the channel. We just hit 700,000 subscribers. So a huge thank you to you guys for watching and following along. Uh, I know that some of you get pretty impatient as some of these projects are massive projects. They take a lot of time before I can get another video out on them. So I appreciate the patience and uh, everybody hanging in there, especially as I continually find new projects to get excited about and, of course, drag home. Anyways, guys, that's going to be the end of this one. So again, a huge thanks to you guys for watching and bumping us over 700,000 subscribers. I want to wish everybody a safe, happy, and healthy New Year's as we roll into 2024. We've got a lot of big things happening, so stay tuned. I'm looking forward to all those projects and more coming up on the channel. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Later.